Hi there, this is Heather with Autism Chrysalis. I just finished a physical therapy appointment and it actually went just fine. There was no awkwardness, no social backlash. It went just as normal. I'd like to briefly tell you the story of why I thought there would be an issue with it and how I managed my anxiety for the last week, anticipating this appointment and anticipating that there might be a problem with it. Um, I also want to share how the techniques that I used to deal with that and to get to the point where I was able to express my needs last week and hold a boundary and then deal with that tension for a week waiting to see if there would be some issue with it. Um, how those are the same techniques that I present in my anti-anxiety course. Don't worry, it's not going to be a heavy-handed sales pitch. A lot of this is just good information, but I wanted to let you know that that's coming in case you're um, just don't like being surprised by that kind of stuff. All right, so about a week ago, just after my last physical, thera physical therapy appointment, I got a call the next day from the office manager saying that she wanted to or not that she wanted to, that she already had rescheduled this appointment, changed the time for it, canceled a different appointment that I had and um, scheduled me with a different therapist. Someone I had seen, but uh, I don't see on a regular basis, uh, but, it, but isn't my regular therapist. Um, and she just wanted to check to make sure that the new time would be okay with me. Just wanted to add in, I forgot to mention that the reason why they're, they were changing wasn't because the therapist schedule changed or the office was closing or something that I couldn't say no to, but because they wanted to fit someone else in and give my spot to someone else and then give me to a different therapist, which would have been at a different time, um, and cancel my other appointment for someone else as well. So. And all of a sudden, my nervous system went into a big reaction and I could feel myself like flooding with feelings and with intensity. And it wasn't quite going to overwhelm and shut down, but it was heading in that direction. And I did my like self calming techniques. I did the the slow breathing out pursed lips kind of because that calms the nervous system strangely enough but it does and my mind instead of going to the place of I, I need to make this okay with her it actually went to the place of I'm not okay with that I don't I actually didn't mind the time change uh, I didn't want her to cancel the other appointment, and I didn't want to switch the, um, the switch switch therapist I was seeing. Um, but even though I was okay with the time change, it didn't actually matter to me that particular day. I didn't want, like not being asked about it in advance. And I wanted to say all of those things, and a year ago, honestly, months ago. I probably wouldn't have. I wouldn't have been able to. I would have just said, okay, and like shut down the phone and been, been really angry, angry at myself, angry at her, angry at the system, at all these people who always mess me up. And I'd have complained about it for a week to everyone in my life who would have listened. And I would have been really, really upset about how everything goes wrong and how people keep doing things to me and and it was like in one split second I saw that whole pattern of all of those things that was that would have happened that I had experienced many many times and I also saw an alternate version it was like there was this witness inside of me that was watching these two realities play out in my head in a split second. And the alternate reality was me saying, no, that's not okay. I want to keep my appointments the way they were. And 
that one felt scary, but it also felt good. It felt... Like, that's what I wanted. Like, I was... I wanted to stand up for myself. I wanted to say that it wasn't okay. And I could feel my throat, like, getting tighter as I wanted to get the words out of my mouth. But then this other... That, that part of me that was able to just watch this whole experience happening, watch that too. And it's like it reassured me that it's like, oh, I see what's happening. I see that you're having an anxiety reaction. That's really interesting. This is what often happens to us. Huh. I know how that other reality is going to play out. I don't know how this reality is going to play out. The, the new one because I've never tried it before, but I want to. I wonder if that, if I could do that. And it was like this witness was, was just very calmly noticing what was going on and walking me through it. And, and as that happened, my anxiety level settled a little bit. It was still there. I was still having the anxiety reaction. My heart was pounding so hard and my throat was tight and my hands were shaking as I was holding the phone, physically shaking. I could see them. And, and that the anxiety was, it was like I could see it happening, but it didn't have to determine what I did. It was like I knew that I could handle it handle being anxious, handle the tension. And then what came out of my mouth was, and I'm pretty sure this is pretty close to a, a direct quote of myself, is like, actually, no, I don't like that. I, I don't appreciate that you didn't ask me beforehand. I'm actually okay with the time, but I didn't, but you didn't ask me about it. But I'm not okay with switching to the other therapist. So I don't want to do that. And then I just like, it was almost like my heart stopped for a moment. I was waiting to see what she would do. And, um, and her reaction was, oh, and I could see, I could hear the note of surprise in her voice. But she said just, oh, okay, then I'll put the appointments back the way they were. Thank you very much. Have a good day. And that was it. And then I had to like sit down because I was going to fall if I didn't. Um, and that was the entire thing. And I got the text message confirmation of my new old appointment. And then I knew I was going to have to wait for a week for the appointment to see if like, what would happen when I showed up? Like, this is the office manager. She has control of the schedule. Is it going to be weird? Is Am I not going to get the service that I'm used to getting? Is it, um, are they going to make little comments about things? Or am I not going to be treated as well? Or um, is the therapist herself, like, did she not like yeah, like just like all of these possibilities of all the things that could go wrong. And I got there today and absolutely none of it happened. Absolutely none of it. They just, no one treated me any different than ever. They just checked me in. Hi, how you doing? No big deal. There was no reference to it. No mention whatsoever. No change in tone. No comments. It was as if it never happened. And... I, I kept expecting something and nothing happened. And so here I am kind of settling my nervous system, reinforcing for myself that it was okay. Like <laughs> I, I said what I needed. I said what I wanted that I didn't want my appointments to be changed. And I got it. Like I wasn't rude. I wasn't mean about it. I was direct. 
and I did surprise her by not just going along with what she wanted, but I mean, surprise is okay. It, it's fine. She can deal with that. And I can deal with my stuff. And for the last week, I've constantly had to remind myself over and over that whatever happens, I can deal with it. If it's awkward, well, I've been in lots of, lots of awkward situations before. I know how to, to get through it. Maybe it's not good or well, but I've always survived them. I can handle another one. It's probably not going to ruin my entire relationship with these people. So that that's the, that's the thing. It's like how I got through it was in the course, we're going to be talking a lot about painful thoughts that add extra layers of pain to an already painful situation. Because there's, there's plenty of situations that themselves are, they're bad, they're painful, they're difficult, they're whatever. Um, but depending on how we think about it, we can make it worse. And, and it's like, how do you pick that apart? How do you get this distance from the extra pain? And how do you sort out which is appropriate pain, which is like just the situation and what is the extra stuff that I'm adding on so that we're not gaslighting ourselves. So we're not like pretending that it's all fine um, when it's really not, but how do you pick that apart? So for me, what I figured out was that the painful thought that I was adding on to the potentially awkward situation was that it's going to ruin my relationship with these people forever and that I am not going to get care and that my hip will be in pain for the rest of my life because there are no other options. I can't deal with it. And yeah, it's just, it's going to ruin everything. So that was my painful chain of thoughts. And, and I went through all of the, like the questioning, the, the distancing stuff that we're going to get into detail in, in the class. Um, and that's what got me through the week is every time that stuff came up, I would just let myself work through those, those extra thoughts, get a little bit of distance from it. See, wow, that's, that's really impacting me and I can deal with it. I can trust myself. And that's really the core of it. I want to do a whole nother video on this, but like, I think the core of, of anxiety relief is developing trust in yourself that you can handle situations, even bad situations, that you'll be able to get through it. Maybe not well, maybe you won't always know what the right things to say are going to be. Maybe it's still not going to make it better but trusting yourself that you can handle it that you can get through it that you'll survive um but even if when things go wrong not just if but when things go wrong because things will go wrong in our lives even when things go wrong you'll find some way to get through it and i think that that's what has been growing in me for for several years now and the more I trust myself that I can handle things the more I can bear that tension when it's not quite right when it's not perfect when it's not the way I expected things to go when things change suddenly or um when I say something and it doesn't go over right with the other person as I have been able to develop that trust in myself, I can deal with those situations better. Like developing that trust in myself was a long process. And that's the, the techniques in the class help. Like the, the learning how you separate the painful extra um, the extra pain kind of thoughts from the real actual pain of the real situation and how to tell the difference. Um, 
and as well as like just physical techniques like that that breathing um like pers like when you breathe out through pursed lips slowly something happens in your parasympathetic nervous system which creates a creates a parasympathetic reaction and releases endorphins and et cetera, et cetera. Like it, it, it works. Like there's a, there's a bunch of different physical things that can help. We have a couple of imagination exercises. If you're into that, I try and offer a variety of things so that everyone can find one or two things that like really appeal to you. Um, and if there's other ones that don't, that's fine. I don't expect it all to, but there'll be at least a couple hopefully, that uh, that will really resonate with you. And if you use those, even inconsistently over time, it, it will make a difference. And gradually, as you notice that you are dealing with things, that trust that you can deal with things grows. All right. I hope something that in this was interesting to you. If you're interested in that course, I'll put a link to it below in the description. Um, and hope you have an era wonderful day. <laughs>